all, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. Let's start our discussion. Today, we're going to talk about natokinase. And I think we'll do three talks in this series. Today will be natokinase and clotting. Then we'll talk about natokinase and the degradation of the spike proteins. And then we'll talk about the dosage and safety. So let's start. So this is flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com. So in here, you'll see a lot of educational material. Plus, if you go here to a treatment protocol, you will see various protocols as well. This is NATO, in which NATO kinase is found. I'll discuss a little more about this one. Then this is a study that I'll be using. This is about the NATO kinase, an oral antithrombotic agent for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. And then we'll discuss this study at a later time, degradative effect of NATO kinase on spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. And then some references that are present here. All of these references can be found or links to the references can be found in the description of this video or with this video. So let's start our discussion. So natokinase is an extracellular enzyme. What does that mean? There is a pathogen called Bacillus subtilis. Bacillus subtilis, we'll call it BS from now on in this discussion, and we'll call natokinase as NK in this discussion. So Bacillus subtilis is a bacterium that produces natokinase. It is an extracellular enzyme produced by Bacillus subtilis. So what happens is for thousands of years in Japan, what they do is they ferment soybeans with Bacillus subtilis. The result is a food product which is called natto. And in natto, natokinase is a part of that. So here, this is natto. And I just showed you on Wikipedia with its attribution as well over there. This is natto and this is eaten as a food and it has many effects. So today in our discussion, we'll be talking about natto kinase and its anticoagulant effect. This has been used nowadays with the clotting issues with many of the latest viral diseases, for example, COVID. It is also spike protein degradative enzyme and we'll discuss that next. In addition to this, it actually has been used for longevity as well. So let's continue our discussion. So today is the discussion of antithrombotic or thrombolytic properties of natokinase. So let's look at very quickly the clotting cascades or how does the blood clot in our bodies. Remember that clotting can occur because of two mechanisms or two pathways. We call them intrinsic and extrinsic pathways. Extrinsic pathway, as the name suggests, if there is a trauma to our tissue, which causes tissue break, of course, that would also cause blood vessel break. And when a blood vessel is broken and the tissue that is present outside of the blood vessel, that tissue and the collagen is exposed to the material that is running in the blood, that is the blood itself. Once that extra vascular tissue is exposed to intravascular blood compartment, then what happens is that there is the blood clotting factor 7 that becomes activated. It is activated by the tissue factor. Tissue factor is just the tissue itself that is becoming exposed to the blood. So when the 7 becomes activated, that then activates factor 10. So summary again, when we have trauma, we start a clotting cascade so that we can close the broken blood vessel walls and stop the bleeding. Then there is intrinsic pathway as well. Intrinsic pathway does not need, as the name says, intrinsic, that is to the inner. It does not need any breach of the blood vessel wall. It does not need trauma to our tissues. It can actually start clotting within the closed blood vascular system. So it happens to be triggered by things within the vascular system. For example, the most common trigger for intrinsic pathway are negatively charged surfaces. For example, RNA's presence. RNA is negatively charged in general. Or DNA. 
pieces of DNA are negatively charged in general. Then polyphosphates are negatively charged. Then there can be pathogens that can be negatively charged. There can be proteins, foreign proteins or proteins spilling from the tissues that can be negatively charged. There can be activated platelet that became activated for other reasons. And activated platelets are negatively charged. For example, we have seen this, that the platelet, for example, remember endothelium, I did this discussion before, when endothelium becomes activated, then the endothelium reduces the production of nitric oxide, which in turn causes platelets to start becoming activated. Similarly, the release of AMP or calcium can also cause the platelets to be activated. There are many factors. So the activated platelets have negative surfaces. Those negative surfaces act as a platform to start activating the blood clotting factors. So in general, negative surfaces. So here what happens is in the intrinsic pathway that factor 12 becomes active. Then factor 12 activates factor 11. Factor 11 activates factor 9. And activated factor 9 activates factor 10. So factor 10 and onwards is a final common pathway. That is, this pathway is common from here on to both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. Similarly, factor 8's activation also causes factor 10 to be activated. Once the factor 10 is activated, then what that does is it activates thrombin. So prothrombin, this is also a model in our body that many of our proteins are created as inactive protein. And then some event has to occur to make them active. So when they are inactive, they are in their pro form. There are some actually that are doubly inactivated. So they are in their pre-pro form. So here, prothrombin is produced. Prothrombin needs to be activated to thrombin. And so factor 10 active, in turn, causes prothrombin to become thrombin. Thrombin in turn causes fibrinogen. So again here, instead of saying profibrin, this is fibrinogen, which also means the inactive form. Fibrinogen is converted to fibrin, which is active fibrin. Now active fibrins are monomers, that means they're tiny little single molecules. But once they are fibrin, once they are active, they start binding to each other and they start making fibrin polymers. So what is happening here, whichever way the factor 10 becomes active, it will eventually cause fibrin to start becoming active as well. Now these fibrins, you can think of them as ropes. So what our body does is it knows that there is a breach in the blood vessel, for the extrinsic pathway at least, and it needs to make a plug and shove that plug in the breach to stop the bleeding. Now, intrinsic pathway is a more complicated situation because that is not exactly a plug that we are trying to breach. There is some offending agent in the blood to which our blood is responding by clotting. So here, the fibrin polymers, what they do is they start wrapping around the platelets. Our body makes these clots by having platelets. Imagine platelets as the name says, these are tiny plates, platelet. But imagine them as tiny bags and you put those bags where there is a breach in a river and you wrap the bags and tie the bags together. Imagine they are sandbags. You tie them together with ropes. That makes a kind of a barrier. So similarly, you take lots of platelets and then you bind them together, aggregate them together with fibrin. So platelets can actually aggregate with each other. They can hold each other's hands. But these are weak plugs. They can very easily disseminated or broken by the blood flow and the mechanical forces on them. But once you tie the fibrin ropes around them, they become solid clots. Now they cannot really just be dispersed easily. But our body is very smart. It knows that if I am making clots, which are going to go and become a plug in some breach in the blood vessel or clots that are now just tumbling around in the body, in the vascular system, our body knows that at some point I need to dissolve those clots. 
once the tissue repairs have occurred or the offending agent has disappeared, I need to have those clots go away as well. So what our body does is, if you see here, this little enzyme, it is plasminogen. Again, plasminogen, it is an inactive form. Just like pro forms, gen forms are also inactivated. And this is the scissor looking enzyme will be used as well a little later. So plasminogen is produced by liver and it is circulating in our tissues. What happens is that when we make clots, in those clots, we also bind these scissor proteins or plasminogens in the clots. We are so smart, our body is so smart that it knows that in the future, I will need to break down the clots. So to be able to do that, it has already packed the scissors in the clot. So when the time comes to break down, just pick up those scissors and start breaking down the fibers or ropes. So these clots are formed, clots go and plug the breaches or they start becoming clots within the vascular system which can become very dangerous. Now our body also has systems if you see here that will try to dissolve the clots. So we have a balance of pro-clotting systems and anti-clotting systems. So now we are looking at the anti-clotting systems. So we have something called tissue plasminogen activator. This enzyme, for example, is present on the walls of endothelium. And the function of this enzyme is that it will not allow lots of clots to settle on the endothelium. It will break down those clots because we do not want clots in the blood vessels. So what happens is tissue plasminogen activators function is to activate these plasminogen molecules or these tiny scissors. Once they are activated, these scissors will break the fibrin and dissolve the clot. Similarly, we have another product called urokinase. Urokinase is called urokinase because it was found in urine. Urokinase's function is also to activate the plasminogen to plasmin so that the clot can be broken down. However, our body has another counter to these clot dissolving mechanisms and we have something called PAI1 and PAI2. These are plasminogen activator inhibitor. So this little guy over here in turn inhibits those things that will activate plasminogen. So for us to dissolve a clot, what we have to do is we have to activate these two guys, tissue plasminogen activator and urokinase. But to activate them, we have to disactivate PAI or deactivate or disinhibit actually because PAI normally keeps the other two stopped. <laughs> so here is the, now you're seeing a triple check. So now what happens is let's bring natokinase in the mix. When the natokinase is administered, it does a few things that are very interesting. Number one, it takes a pro-urokinase. So see the pro here. Pro is an inactive form. It takes pro-urokinase and converts that into urokinase, which will then be in abundant form, go and help dissolve the clots. Secondly, natokinase knows that, hey man, I need to stop the inhibitory system, inhibitory system to the activating system, right? So natokinase causes degradation or breakdown of the plasminogen activator inhibitors. It breaks down the shackles that are stopping TPA and urokinase from activating plasminogen to break down the clot. Interesting, isn't it? So as soon as the PAI is degraded, that releases urokinase and TPA to start doing their function. And what is their function? To activate plasminogen to plasmin, which will then cause the breakdown of the clot and that is how the D-dimers are produced as well. So D-dimer is for us a lab to figure out if the clots are being dissolved or if the fibrins are being broken down. In addition to this, natokinase actually increases the amount of urokinase by this pathway of making more urokinase from pro-urokinase. Natokinase also increases the TPA's amount, which would in turn cause plasminogen activation and breakdown of the clot. Natokinase can directly start breaking down the clot as well. And how is that? Here, if you see the natokinase throwing water, 
So in our body, many times when we want to break down something, we hydrolyze it. We put water in its bonds and that thing starts breaking down. So here, natokinase can directly cause hydrolysis of fibrin and plasmin, resulting in the breakdown of the clot as well. Because of these diverse mechanisms, working on the prokinase, prouro-kinase, working on the TPAs, then this breaking down the inhibitory molecules, then also directly working to break down the clot. So now there are triple actions, direct action on the clot, secondary action on reducing this PAI, tertiary action of increasing the ones that activate plasminogen, and of course the final action of activating the plasminogen itself, and it directly breaks down the fibrin too. Other fibrinolytic or thrombolytic substances have more selective functions. This has this bigger generalized global function. Now, looking at some of the messages in this study, natokinase can break down blood clots by directly hydrolyzing fibrin and plasmin substrate, converts endogenous prouro-kinase to urokinase, degrades PAI1 or plasminogen activator inhibitor 1, and increases tissue plasminogen activator. Unlike common fibrinolytic proteases, proteases mean protein breakdown enzymes, such as TPA and UPA, which can produce various side effects such as bleeding, NK exhibit little to no side effects. Remember, it is a food product being eaten for thousands of years. Studies also indicate that an oral administration of natokinase can be absorbed by the intestinal tract. NK exhibits strong fibrinolytic activity after intradermal absorption. Very interesting. Then, in the same study, they say, unlike aspirin, which often triggers bleeding or gastric ulcers, NK improves blood flow without any adverse effects. k carrageenan induced inflammatory thromboformation in rat tails was used to examine the effect of NK. Then they also say, orally administered two capsules of NK, 2000 formula units per capsule, on a daily basis after two months, a significant and similar decrease in factor 7, remember extrinsic pathway 7, and factor 8, intrinsic pathway 8, and fibrinogen, which is part of the ropes, was observed in all of the groups. No adverse effects were detected during the two-month trial and heart rate, body weight, and uric acid levels remained stable. Then they say, natokinase has strong ability to break down thrombi and fibrin, even a single dose of NK has been reported to result in fibrinolysis via the cleavage of cross-linked fibrins. So these fibrins that were cross-linked to make these ropes, it can break them down, directly break them down. In that study, 12 healthy young males were randomly administered a single capsule of NK 2000 formula units. The antithrombin concentration in their blood increased significantly two hours after the oral consumption of the NK capsule. So remember antithrombin activity. And finally, just a bonus message, the accumulation of lipofusin as age pigment is considered a hallmark of aging. In this regard, NATO extract was reported to delay lipofusion accumulation in the nematode. The lifespan of C. elegans was also significantly prolonged by NATO extract. So that is the discussion about the NATO kinase. The takeaway, if you just wanted to remember one thing, the takeaway is NATO kinase attacks the thrombi in multiple ways. Directly breaking down fibrin, break hydrolyzing plasmin, increasing the amount of urokinase, increasing the amount of TPA, degrading the inhibitory system, all of that resulting in the lysis of blood clots. So this is the discussion today. In our next chapter of this discussion, we'll talk about natokinase and the spike protein. Now, I also want to make a comment that lumbrokinase is another that is derived from the worms, is also another that is said to have similar effects as natokinase. However, there is ample and sufficient evidence present for natokinase, there isn't sufficient studies and data. There are some studies that are in progress, there isn't sufficient data available, so it may have exactly a similar behavior, but data is lacking 
On the other hand, for Netokinase, there is a lots of data that is available. So with this, thank you very much and I would see you again for the next chapter of this discussion.